Welcome to Chemistry 1B Example 6 in Unit 1. Um, this is another coffee cup calorimetry example that is a multi-step and multi-component problem. So in this instance, if you look at the question, you have an acid-base reaction taking place between sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide. Uh, the two solutions are mixed in a calorimeter and the temperature of the solution increases to 33.9 degrees from 25 degrees C. We have two components. We have the sulfuric acid. We have 50 mils of the sulfuric acid and we have 25 mils of the sodium hydroxide. Okay, and we need to calculate the change in enthalpy in kilojoules per mole of the limiting reactant. Okay, there's a number of assumptions you have to make. The specific heat of the solution is 4.184 joule per gram degree C. The density is one gram per milliliter and the calorimeter absorbs a negligible amount of heat. So, so where do we start with this problem? Well, the first thing we need to do is write a balanced chemical equation. We can't do anything without a chemical equation. So if we write the balanced chemical equation, we're going to get the following, where we see we have a 2 to 1 mole ratio. Okay, so we have 1 mole of sodium hydroxide, uh, sorry, sulfuric acid, and 2 moles of your sodium hydroxide. Okay, you're given some volumes of each. So there's 50 moles of acid and 25 moles of base. And if we work out the densities, assuming that the densities for each is one gram per mole, we have 25 grams and 50 grams, essentially. All right, you can see what, what has been done here to calculate the mass of the solution. And we end up with 75 grams of solution. We can work out the heat that is generated during this reaction by multiplying the mass. Sorry. Oh, my pen doesn't want to work today. Uh, let's see. The mass multiplied by temperature change multiplied by specific heat. And we see we get 2.8 times 10 to the power 3 joules. Okay. So that is the heat absorbed by the calorimeter. Now, what we need to do is we need to determine the limiting reagent. And that is done by working out the number of moles of sulfuric acid, as well as the number of moles of sodium hydroxide, or that would be required, and then determining which of the two is limiting. So the first step would be here, step one, where we've got 50 moles of sulfuric acid, we have converting this to liters. So, so this is the conversion to liters. And then here is the concentration of the acid, 0.987 mole per liter. So this is concentration. And we find that we get this number of moles of sulfuric acid present. Now, if we have this number of moles um, from the chemical equation, so we would use the chemical equation here. You can see, and we would use the mole ratio of the sodium hydroxide to determine the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that would be required. Okay, so if we do that calculation, we end up with 0 0.0987 moles of sodium hydroxide. That is required, not what is actually present. Okay, if we then look at the sodium hydroxide, we have 25 moles and we have the conversion to milliliters to liters, and then we have the concentration of the sodium hydroxide. And if we work this out, um, you, will, you will see that we only have 0 0.0500 moles of sodium hydroxide present, whereas we need 0 0.0987 moles of sodium hydroxide, which we don't have. So therefore, this implies that the sodium hydroxide is the limiting reagent. Okay, so using then this number of moles of sodium hydroxide that's actually present, 
and the heat that we calculated in the previous slide. So this is the Q value. Remember, this is the equation that I've mentioned to you before. Delta H is equal to Q over N. Okay, so we have the heat value for the reaction divided by the number of moles and then converting to kilojoules. And we end up with a value of negative 56.0, well, 56 kilojoules uh, per mole for this chemical reaction.